Hello guys, welcome back to our channel Sassy Squad Family TV where we support Prince Harry and Meghan Markle in the fight against racism and bigotry of the British tabloids. Please guys, thank you so much for each and every single one of you for all the support you give us. Your support goes a long way in the fight against bigotry and racism. So guys, today I'm going to be talking about Prince William's comment when he said the royal family is not very much a racist family. Those are lies, lies, and lies. And in this article, as I'm going to read it, guys, it says that, No, William, the royal family isn't just very racist. They're institutionally racist. The accusations from Harry and Meghan expose the deep racism within the British establishment. Few can have escaped the ongoing fallout of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's interview with Oprah with the accusations of racism, harassment, and abuse made against the royal family being Headline news worldwide. And we all saw what happened. We all saw the abuse that Meghan Markle faced. We saw the racism that she experienced. We saw every single thing from the lie that a white woman, the future queen of England, made was made to cry by a black woman. Do you know that black women have been lynched just for that itself? And Meghan Markle was bullied, abused while pregnant for because of that lie written by Camilla Tomine, Camilla Tomine, is a lie written by her and their responses have sharply divided along political lines with the left and center solidly supporting the couple in contrast the right has launched into a fully fledged defense of the royals taking the form of yet more of the abusive character assassination that was a focal point of the interview yet this abuse is not equal with the duchess of sussex continuing to be at the focal point of a hate campaign led by the far right and fully supported by the british press and establishment you don't need to be a royalist to be disgusted and yes each and every single one of us has seen the abuse that Meghan Markle has faced at the hands of the British tabloids. And the abuse is not equal. It's one-sided where the right, led by the royal family, with its minions, the likes of Piers Morgan, its tr online trolls that the royal family pays for, have used that to go after Meghan Markle, a character assassination, a hate campaign led by the far right and fully supported by the British press and establishment to cover up for things like Brexit, all of that just to go after one black woman for falling in love with a white prince. For while to my talk all day about Piers Morgan having a crush on Meghan Markle, the lack of morality in the capitalist press or anti-Americanism amongst the British establishment when you cut to the chase, the reason behind these attacks since day one is race. In marrying a black woman, Harry became a race traitor to the far right, while Meghan's crime was nothing more than existing while being black. That's her crime, and we all know it. Each and every single one of you has seen it. And that's why you subscribe. That's why you join this channel. To fight against this travesty. This racism. This bigotry. The, the two of them suffered death threats from the neo-Nazi Sonecric division. An offshoot of national action. Yet the uncomfortable truth for many is that these fascist views are not alien to the British establishment or large sections of the public. After all, after all, our own Prime Minister Boris Johnson once referred to black Africans as flag-waving pecaninis with watermelon smiles. Yes, that's the Prime Minister. That's the Prime Minister of the UK. The royal family having significant problems with race has been an open secret in Britain for decades, yet something that could be brushed under the rug by the establishment due to old age or eccentricity. Prince Philip's many racist jibes have always been presented as an amusing character flow, a disregard for political correctness that we should laugh alongside rather than criticize. Those who call out Philip for his comments get quickly shut down by those demanding that people respect everything he's done for the country. Yet few can name any of what this might be. Let's be honest with each other. For instance, on the royal patronages, a study has found out that having a royal patron as a member of a charity does not give add any form of value whatsoever to that charity. In fact, charities of the likes of Kate Middleton 
the Duchess of Cambridge have all gone bankrupt because of that. But it's far from being the problem of Prince Philip alone, who can forget when pedophile and alleged pedophile in chief and made a series of racist remarks against Arab at an official function involving the Saudi royal family, or his use of the N word. How can you even forget? Princess Michelle of Kent, who made her feelings on Meghan Markle expressly plain when she wore a brooch that featured a slave kept as a pet, proudly displaying the revolting piece of jewelry at the royal's first meeting with Meghan Markle. She also told the New Yorkers to go back to the colonies, black New Yorkers to go back to the colonies, and name two black sheep on her farm, Venus and Serena, after the Williams sister. Therefore, those who continue to debate which member of the royal family asked Harry how black his son would be are missing the entire point. It doesn't really matter for the entire farm is institutionally racist. I even pretended years ago to be an African, an half-caste African, but because of my light eyes I did not get away with it, but I dyed my hair black. A friend of mine described that experience to me. Princess Michelle of Kent 2004 we, while many hope that this self-evident fact might bring a period of introspection to the royal family and that they might face their problems head-on, would be sorely disappointed. However, with Prince William absurdly sitting yesterday that the royals are very much not racist, these ideas of British exceptionalism and white supremacy still flourish amongst the wider aristocracy, with Boris Johnson exemplifying this when he said in 2002, that the legacy of colonialism is not a blot upon our conscience and that the problem is not that we were once in charge but that we are not in charge anymore think about that statement for a second you saw the travesty the crimes they committed against people of color black people you saw how they beat them you've seen those pictures the images you've seen in belgium for instance how black people were, hands were cut off, the children's hands were cut off right in front of them if they failed to perform a task. And even when they did it, that the task, they were still cut off because they had pleasure in doing that. Because they didn't see Africans as human beings. That's what he's saying. That's what they're lamenting about. That he can't do it anymore. They can't mistreat Africans anymore like they used to previously during colonialism. And even now, they do mistreat Africans, like what happened with George Floyd. But in a, they, this time, they try to use coded language in their racism. As, Prince, as Will Smith famously said, racism is currently being filmed. That's what, Prince, that's what Will Smith said. And those are facts, complete facts, which I completely agree with. He said, racism is not getting worse. It's getting filmed. Indeed, it's a mistake to believe for a second that the behavior of the likes of Philip, Andrew, and others haven't been going on for generations, with the royals being heavily involved in the slave trade. Elizabeth I sponsored the pirate John Hawkins in his endeavors as a slaver, renting him a 700-ton slave ship and allowing him to run a trade between Africa, the Americas, and England. The royal family had a monopoly on slavery for 150 years, and the heralded glory of Elizabethan England was funded by the slavery. By the time of James I, the king passed a monopoly license to the private company, bringing tensions with parliament, particularly after they abolished it in 1618. You see how angry they get at losing their slaves. And you're telling me that the UK is not racist, according to a report that was written by the prime minister's own people. However, Isan Charles I brought it back and the license became a contributing factor in the outbreak of the English Civil War, a fact that is little taught in school. Following the restoration of the monarchy, the royal family's involvement in slavery only grew, being the owner of the Royal Gambia Company and the Royal Adventurers Company and the Royal African Company, the exploitation of slaves, gold, ivory and natural resources funding the growth of an empire. More recently, the links between the royal family and the far right were another open secret across the country, with Edward VIII being an outright Nazi sympathizer. While apologists might suggest that Wally Simpson influenced the king in his political ideologies, again blaming the woman, this is willing ignorance of the royal's 
long history, with the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia putting fear into royal houses across Europe and the family history of white supremacy and military belligerence, it takes an extreme level of delusion to believe the royal family weren't swayed by the allure of fascism. The archives at Windsor Castle contain shelves of documentation from the 1930s uh, believed to contain private correspondence between the royals and na senior figures in the Nazi regime, including Hitler himself. Nobody is allowed to access them. Many other documents were destroyed in 1945 during a cleanup operation designed to hide the truth of how close the royal family and the Nazi regime actually were. In 2015, the son of all people published unseen footage of the Queen, the Queen Mother, Prince Edward VIII, and Princess Margaret all making enthusiastic na Nazi salute at Balmoral Castle. The usual suspects were suitably outraged, insisting that the Queen was and Margaret were children and, and did not know what they were doing. Think about this. If someone else did this, how many times? There would be no excuse. If a black person did it, there would be absolutely no excuse. Always covering up for other people what they do. And while that defense is sound, as managing direct editor Stig Abel pointed out, the issue was the extent to which the British aristocracy, notably Edward VIII, in this case, in 1930s, was sympathetic towards fascism. Indeed, while the difference of the monarch covered the press for days, few wished to talk about the sainted Queen Mother, long portrayed as the grandmother of the entire nation. Yet once again, nobody should have been surprised, with the late Elizabeth Bowes Leon being another prolific racist and ardent supporter of appeasement. She made her views quite explicit the time she told her diarist, Beware the Black Amours and the time she told a lady admitting that Africans just don't know how to govern themselves. The paternal racism of colonialism showing through when she added, what a pity we are, still not, we are not still looking after them. But it was it was it only black people with who the repulsive Bowers Leon had a problem, walking into a reception with a Japanese prince with the phrase, nip on, nip on, and setting shared reservation about Jews. Prince William is sitting, his family is not racist, it's a little short of insulting to be honest. It is insulting when Prince William said that his family is not racist. They are racist. This arrogant denialism will undoubtedly find favor with the far-right press, who will hide be behind their true motivation of racism, behind a veil of patriotism. Yet the public at large will no longer accept this bare-faced lie and the lack of accountability. Across the world, new calls for social justice are fashioning the establishment to their core. They don't like it. For that's why you hear of the term woke. That's why they keep saying woke. Whenever someone is fighting for social justice, they keep saying, oh, look at this guy. He's woke. Make no mistake. The likes of Andrew Newell and Lawrence Fox railing against wokeness has nothing to do with a few thousand people using hashtags on Twitter. This backlash from the kind comes from fear, with the establishment both petrified and angry that they are losing control of society, particularly amongst young people. No longer will people accept how things must be. They will not accept crumbs from the table. Not that anyone is born better than anyone else. They will not accept that the legacy of the British Empire must be displayed as statues, depicting a dominating triumph over all who see it. Nor will they accept a royal family who is not only unrepresentative of their subjects, but swamped with criminality of the worst kind. Countries around the world that were once under the yoke of the British imperialism, long began the process of throwing off the shackles of the monarchy. Speaking of which, Barbados currently is seeking independence from the UK, and in a few months they will be independent. Congratulations to them. I am hoping that other Commonwealth countries will do the same. Whether through revolution or politics, they moved away from the domination of entitled elites and began the slow process of rebuilding their countries and livelihoods. As the days of outright colonialism begin to fade, these countries are finding new boldness, beginning decolonization programs as they seek to eradicate the last vestiges of British and royal influences. So too, it is now time for Britain to begin its own process of stepping away from royalty and the eternal establishment class that represent not the future but the past. These forces remain committed not to a multicultural future, nor international cooperation and peace, but to white supremacy, British exceptionalism, and the advancement of new forms of colonialism and cultural domination. The British monarchy has no place in this new world, and history may well record that the beginning of the end started not 
with a sword or a bullet, but with opera and the power of a media that could not be influenced by the establishment. I like this article. I absolutely love this article, and I believe each and every single one of you should check out this article. It's a fantastic, fantastic article, a fantastic, beautiful, amazing, amazing piece that each and every single one of you should read. Please me not, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And please leave a comment below. I want to hear directly from you. Don't forget to hit the like subscribe button. Share our video. Share these articles. Click the link. Subscribe to our channel. And help us grow our audience. Let's spread the word. The, word, the monarchy must be abolished. The class system that threatens our unity must be taken down. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And please leave a comment below. I love you guys always and forever you guys